Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And our lovely technician, Bronco. Hello from Bronco. Yay! We got him to speak again. And even say his name a little bit different than we have been saying it so far. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you that you could introduce uh, the real you. <laughs> Definitely. I think 10 episodes more and you will be our co host. Yeah, we will get you there. Don't worry. Lasse was also uh, shy at the beginning, but he, he got there. Yeah. So guys, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show where we solve life challenges of anonymous strangers. That's like a double stranger <laughs> and anonymous. But you know what we mean, right? Yes. It's like, yeah, I know. We know what we want to say is that those are people that we don't know. Who and send us challenges by our website. Yes. Um, and not only we don't know them meaning the stranger, but we also don't require them to give us their real names. That's yes. the anonymity. Uh, no. Oh my God, not this word. Anonymity? No. no, no, that's definitely not the one. I give up. Uh, I give up. So basically what we wanted to say, if you go to our awesome website, the five options.com and submit your challenge, you don't have to give your email address. You don't have to give a name. You can Give a name, like for example, Agent 007, or leave the uh, or leave that uh, part blank, and then we will come up with the name for you. But yeah, if you are sitting there with a challenge, a life challenge that is very difficult to solve, and you would like to receive five options that will be inspiring and very often fun in order to get your own creativity going, in order to get inspired on how to solve your life challenge, then that's the right place to go. That's the best place to go. Definitely. Yes. I don't know, Marta, I've noticed that for the last couple of episodes, I am just like totally and definitely, like totally, definitely, definitely, totally. It's like, can someone please stop me? Yeah, we sometimes tend to have those words that are chasing us. Like it used to be actually, then it was beneficial. And yeah, we have some of those. And the, the last challenge, lurking from the darkness. I think I said it like five times. Yeah, so uh, stay with us, even though we repeat some of the words uh, occasionally, it will go away and it will be replaced with another word. Oh, yeah. We're so smart and funny. <laughs> That's the best part. It will be replaced with another word. So um, hopefully you were listening to our previous episode. If you have not, because this is actually part two of a solution for Julia's challenge. If you missed the first part, please go to our YouTube channel where we keep all the recordings of all our radio shows and you can find us really easily. It's enough to go on YouTube and type in search window. You've got five options and here we are. Or you can listen to our podcast. Everything you can find at our website, the five options.com. So whether you want to find us on Facebook, whether you want to find us in a podcast app or on our YouTube channel, all of it, you know, there is one place to go, the five options.com. And from there, you'll find it all the podcasts, the radio shows, the articles, because we also write. Yes, we write because we do everything, guys, for you, especially for you. And we do it out of passion and out of higher purpose to make your lives better. It's it's true. Out of passion and compassion. Out of passion and compassion. Amen. Fist bump. That's nice. Huh? That's a nice one. That's a nice one. No, but we we love people, humanos. <laughs> we love human race, <laughs> also animals and, uh, and nature. Okay, <laughs> where am I going with this? What I wanted to say. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this, but I'm loving it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so 
what we want to say is that what I am actually trying to say here, except of my weird love for animals, is that um, we really want to help people. That actually, that was the whole idea of starting this this initiative, this podcast and, and the website and the blog. So guys, just shoot with your challenges and we will be very, very happy to solve them. Not because we are psychopaths who love to read about people's problems. Well, maybe a little but because we have a calling to make this world a better place. Marta, help me. And also don't be worried about Anna's weird love of animals. It doesn't mean <laughs> anything bad. She actually loves them so much that she doesn't even eat them. So that's, uh, that's Thank where... You. Yeah. Thank you, because I, I come out really weird in this, in this show. I, I, I would like to say I have a cat. So I love animals. I even have, I own a cat, which I don't eat. And I don't do anything. Like, it's, it's my cat. I love him, her. Oh my God, I will stop now. Yeah, let's go, let's move on. Because the challenge that we are having is uh, about breaking up the wedding. Marta hit it. My ex-boyfriend just got engaged. We are not together for two years now, but I always somehow thought that we would end up with each other. I knew he was in a relationship, but I never thought that it was serious. Now I am really shocked and kind of devastated. Should I come forward with my feelings? Should I try to stop the wedding or just let it go? We haven't talked for almost a year now. Yes, this is all we got. So we don't really know any background story to this. But as you can see, what we can see is Julia is shocked and devastated. And she has those thoughts about possibly breaking the engagement, trying to break the engagement, uh, she actually asked, should I try to stop the wedding? So in the first episode, we have discussed two options. Option number one was give yourself a time to figure out what you really feel, because we have jointly agreed with Marta that those feelings can be extremely confusing and uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be love. Uh, so um, it's very important to understand yourself and understand if what I'm feeling is the true love or is it maybe something like I'm losing uh, someone that I have imagined myself with or a simple jealousy or, or something like this. But you have more details in the first episode of this, pod, uh, of this uh, challenge. So please go back there for, for more elaboration. And then based on this answer, if you if Julia would decide that actually this is love, we have proposed her to go through option number two, think about why you want to break up the wedding and are you able to deal with consequences. And that was a very interesting discussion because I think the bottom line was we couldn't really come up with any good reasons to break up someone's wedding except of selfish reasons of I love him, I want him back. It was quite difficult. We understand that every situation is different and we don't have more details, but that was an interesting revelation. And we also talked about all kinds of consequences, including what if he will say no, what if he will say yes, and how your um, action would affect other people, you know, the, the bride-to-be and her family and, and so on, so on. But from this option, if you would think about the reasons or the consequences and you would actually realize that I don't really have any good reasons, maybe I should leave them alone to be happy or I cannot deal with consequences, then option number three would be let him go. And um, that is a very valid option here, I think. I think it's very interesting what you said, because you said that in option number one, if you find out that you don't love him, then go mm -hmm. for option number three. But I would actually say if you find out that you love him, you might as well go for option number three, because if you really love him and he loves someone else and, it, and he's happy with that person, then let him go is just as valid. Yeah, and I, I, I will be honest with you, Marta, that's why I actually was really thinking about this, write down all the reasons why would you break the marriage, except of your own private selfish reasons, meaning I love him, I want him back. And I think this exercise requires a lot of thoughtfulness because you might actually realize I want to be a better person or I really love him and I don't want to, you know, uh, disturb his happiness, you know, that that would be the very selfless reason to let it go. So I totally agree with you. It, it can be also I realize I do love him, but I love him in a way that I want him to just be free to make his own decisions. 
totally, totally on point. Yeah, and uh, option number three, let him go, could also be, you know, you could still look into option number four in some uh, shape or form yes, and uh, have a conversation with him and then let him go. You don't have to go to the crazy town of option number five of stopping wedding at the wedding, but letting him go is a very valid option to yes. consider. Uh, I totally agree because I think we also asked the question to, to you, Julia, in option number one. So get your feelings like um, together, try to figure out what you really think. If you would think that he's the one, uh, why for two years you didn't try to get him back? Why only this moment of, you know, finding out he's engaged is the moment when you suddenly feel devastated and you want to do something? I think that letting go is one of the most difficult things uh, that we have to do. And many times we just have to let go, not of the love, but of the, as Marta mentioned in that option, a vision, an idea, a story we had. And I also mentioned that sometimes uh, a story is more powerful than a person itself in that story. So uh, depending on the feelings that you have identified in previous options, you might let him go because you realize it's not about the guy. It's about the story or a dream I had, or you might realize I love him but he deserves to be happy and probably if he would like me to be back in his life, he would approach me. He wouldn't just, you know, go into other relationship and get engaged. So you have to figure out what letting go are you doing in the first place. But um, I think it, it, it can be a process. It doesn't have to happen within one day. There can be ceremonies around it. Um, I don't know, some kind of uh, goodbye letters or journaling, some things that you don't even need to send to him. You might try to talk with your friends and just try to, you know, get with that decision. Um, but it, it might not be easy, but it will be, I think, really healthy. Yeah, and also you can, uh, when you manage to cool off a little bit, when you manage to, you know, get through the shock, because it could be a really shocking information for us if we had that idea of uh, being together in a while. And then, you know, just try to get that feeling. OK, I'm deciding now to let him go. What kind of feeling comes to you? Because you may be surprised, but you suddenly can get a feeling of relief or you can get a feeling of peace because you may realize that this was just an old story that you were, uh, you know, living into, but it actually is the right thing to do, to simply let him go. Yes, I, I totally agree. And there is a power in letting go someone peacefully, gracefully, and, you know, very much internally. And uh, it, uh, as Marta said, it can go together with option number four. It can be something that you might do after option number four, um, but uh, letting go, um, it requires effort, but I, I think it's um, it it ends up beautifully if you do it the right way. If you honor the the story, if you honor the memories, if you understand that uh, your life paths have just went apart, and uh, and you know, and I think it's it's beautiful, and it's. Uh, it, it gives, at least me personally, because I did exercises like this, it gives me peace. Usually, it in my case, it goes with some sort of letter, a long one. Uh, and in many cases, I don't send that letter. I just write down everything, all the thoughts, all the things I'm grateful for uh, because of that person, all the things I learned and with some kind of uh, wishing well at the end. And I feel better because also my thoughts get organized and I see the silver lining straight away. Then I see, you know, there are so many other possibilities, you know, when you do that exercise and you realize, OK, I'm closing down the door by myself. Um, and yeah, as I said, uh, sometimes I'm sending letters like this. Sometimes I uh, I don't. Sometimes they are just for me. Sometimes I burn them just to make it more uh, symbolic and dramatic if I'm not taking care of the fact that I have to do it in front of the sink. But that's another thing. But uh, for me, it's a very powerful thing. It sounds like a really, really valid option to consider. It's an individual decision. It's an individual process. So, of course, Julia, you have to see what you feel. Just please consider the recognition between the reaction to an information and a recognition between the true deep feelings. 
something that is there, something that stays with you, something that feels real and peaceful and aligned with your true self. Totally. To- See, that's the keyword, totally. But I totally agree. Uh, but of course, we have option number four. And now we are coming more into the direction of actually trying to influence the course of this engagement, hence the wedding. And that option is stop the wedding before the wedding. So here we simply advise you to get your courage, lady balls, however you want to call it, and talk to him. Either talk to him in person or write him a letter or call him. I don't know what means you would prefer but simply express your feelings. If you, after all these exercises that we have proposed to you, still feel that you just simply cannot let it go like this, you you need to do something. Sometimes it's good psychologically because, um, you know, I did everything I could. And actually, if you do it before the wedding and if you do it when the engagement is still fresh i would say you still have a lot of time like to recover and also this you know it's like it's different than option number five that stop the wedding at the wedding that we will come back to in a moment when the consequences also financial economical and so on might be uh, higher and here you don't need to involve anyone it can be just hard to heart conversation with your ex-boyfriend. You can approach him. It might cause some disturbance for him, of course. But I would also say for all the people who are always saying, like, don't disturb, don't mess up because, you know, he's happy. If he's meant to be with that woman, if she is his true love, if they are about to get married, whatever you will say, it might have an effect on him, of course, but it will not stop the wedding. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally know what you mean, because you've named the option quite dramatically. Mm-hmm. Stop the wedding before the wedding. Yeah, but it actually doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to be anything that you are actually trying to stop the wedding, that you are actually taking actions in order to stop that wedding to happen. Because having this kind of on- conversation with mm-hmm. your ex, I think it can be also a goodbye conversation saying goodbye to that person to it can be simply a part of letting go. Mm -hmm. That's why I actually believe that done in the right way. Option number four is a fair option Mm -hmm. because you okay, it it is still difficult. Mm -hmm. It is still very tricky because then you can cause a reaction in him. He may have been running a story about you. He may have then assumed that you don't want him and that's not going to work. And then he got into a new relationship. It may be a good relationship, but you, by coming up with this kind of information, you can cause a similar, you know, strong reaction like he has caused in you. So, of course, this can have big consequences in for his life and in for this bride's to be Mm -hmm. life and so on. But I really love what you have said, Anna. The reality is that if he's meant to be with that woman, nothing really will stop that wedding. They will get married if they want to get married. And that conversation between the two of you can be a really beautiful saying goodbye conversation. Yes. And also, if the case is that he still have feelings for you and for some reason he actually will end the engagement, I would say it's good that you came forward. Uh, Of course, we don't know. We totally don't know what is happening on his side, but it's uh, definitely it is tricky because people would I I really can hear some of my my friends saying, why would you stir up some shit? Basically, like, why would you go and destroy some message to the world? That's the whole thing. You cannot destroy a relationship by saying that you love someone you know it, it, it's it that's the whole thing it can be distressful he might be affected um i know many situations when you know people came forward to their exes with some feelings when they were maybe not engaged but in relationships you get affected sometimes so if someone confesses love for you it can be on the minimum level if he doesn't have feelings it can be embarrassing for him to hear that and you know not knowing how to react i'm really sorry but i'm getting married it will cause something in him of course 
But the argument of uh, don't destroy their uh, engagement or possible marriage by saying to him how you feel, for me, it's not really valid. No, unless you have uh, done it uh, like a couple of times before, you have broken his heart several times. Of course. And you think that you love him, but somehow when you end up together uh, being in a serious relationship, then you suddenly don't want to be in that serious relationship. And you have actually uh, tried that before <laughs> yeah. in uh, another shape or form. And it actually is your uh, really selfish, immature feelings that speak through you then it could be something where you try to, you know, invoke your higher self and, you know, try to remind yourself how you felt when the relationship was getting serious and are you ready to get serious with him? Are you ready to get married with him and so on? But a conversation, an honest, open conversation with him does not equal to actually stopping the wedding at exactly. all. Exactly. So I think that this is still very valid option and also it gives him time if it's done quite relatively fast after you've heard that the engagement happened it gives him time to reflect on what he heard to answer back to you in a way um, and for you also to have a chance because you have to be also graceful about this i believe that this is when it has the most sense you can say to yourself and to him i tried i had to tell you how i feel but i understand and I wish you all the best and, you know, be happy and then you will be all right. You know, it's like, you, you, Julia, you will not die out of it. You, you will be all right. I believe everything happens for a reason. And maybe, you know, you have to go through this lesson. But it's a valid option, I think. And done in a, in a thoughtful way, it can be really catharsis, cathar cathartic for both of you, actually. Yeah. And if you deeply, truly, very strongly feel he is the one you actually also do have the right to come forward and actually fight for the love as well as you yes. have the right to let him go. That's the universal law of love. If you feel he's the one, uh, I allow it. I allow it. You have an allowance from <laughs> Anna. And uh, yeah, and I think the, the the last option is the trickiest one. Oh my God, it is. It is. And I will tell you something. There are plenty of movies that are having this scenario that there is a bride and a groom in a church and a last, you know, boyfriend flame comes in and says, I object. And then the brides or the groom actually depending on the configuration runs away. And we usually cheer for all those people because those are the film, films that are constructed around that relationship. And usually the bride or the groom are the, the intruders. But it looks really nice. But in reality, that's actually something that I don't know. I have read about this and I would say there was a, an explanation that because actually this this is there is a, and I think we will share it on our fa fan page on, on Facebook. There is an article by uh, Vicky something how to stop someone wedding. And there are actual steps, step by step, very practical steps on what you have to do step by step. It's very interesting. And it is written there that, you know, you have to deal with a lot of consequences because that's really traumatic, what, what, what you would do. Um, but, you know, that is an option for people who find out in the last moment where the wedding is or they simply cannot contact the, 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 the groom or the bride in question before. So it's like this is your only chance then it could be understandable. And second thing is um, sometimes you just leave it till the last moment because you are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Should I talk to him? Should I not? And then the, the, the wedding day comes and you are like, I'm going in. I'm going in. I have to do it. So, Marta, stop the wedding at the wedding. So that's exactly what you have been talking about right now is my biggest problem with that option mm -hmm. because planning <laughs> for stopping the wedding at the wedding, that conflicts with my um, set of uh, values. Mm -hmm. Unless it would be something like you find out she's actually a criminal and she has before had some husbands from Black Widow kind of thing. Uh, yeah. stole money uh, and you actually do it for his 
honest and true benefit uh, in this kind of situation maybe i mean life in its full colors and shades uh, i'm sure there are situations mm -hmm. uh, where it is a valid option but planning for stopping the wedding at the wedding while the main reason is your own feelings that's a really that's really a, a tricky stuff. I would go for option four. If, yeah. if I was in any shape or form suspecting, and you might be suspecting since you are uh, writing that challenge to us, <laughs> that yeah. you may want to get that guy, doing it at his wedding, it's really crazy town. Yeah, it is. But you know, the thing that I, I think encourages this idea is the good old line of when the priest or whoever the the officiant is saying, you know, uh, and whoever is against how 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 the line goes, I don't know. and you know, whoever is against this marriage, speak now or remain silent forever. So there is actual invitation for people who are like, uh, okay, I object. I would like to say something. Technically speaking, I know that from many religions and churches, this line has been removed, but it is still there many times. And actually, in movies, this is where that objecting person, you know, shows up usually from the last row from out of nowhere. I object. It looks uh, groovy and, and maybe for some people dramatically romantic. But um, yeah, you know, you can go for it if you really want to. But you have to um, cope with uh, the groom saying what the hell and being kicked out of the church. That's why among many things that they proposed to prepare was a gateway car for yourself <laughs> to run away. You might actually also have a groom saying, yes, I will go with you. And then you actually have to like logistically take the groom out of the church because probably there will be a lot of people very angry. I don't know. I was actually putting myself in a situation of the bride how I would react if something like this would happen at my wedding. And guys, honestly, I think I would laugh like crazy <laughs> if, for instance, some, you know, ex-girlfriend of my future husband comes and she objects, you know, and uh, if he would say, I go with you, I would say, thank God I dodged the bullet because apparently she was the love of his life. If um, he would say, uh, uh, listen, no, then I would just laugh. You know, it's it's a funny thing to remember from your wedding. You know, someone actually wanted to object. So I wouldn't have my, I wouldn't be traumatized by this that much. Of course, I would be somehow, but not that much. So yeah, yeah. It, it depends on the bride for sure. But what you have to take under consideration that for Julia herself, mm -hmm. that may be a traumatic experience. So yeah, of this, course. Is, this is what we are talking about, you know, giving her some food for thought. Yes, exactly. If she hears no, and then everyone is looking at her, and uh, she gets done, then she really gets that stigma uh, yeah. forever and ever uh, with a no. <laughs> yeah, you can also have like the backup version. Okay, that was my gift for you, like uh, an excitement at the wedding. I don't know. It's like, yeah, It. I think the biggest risk here is actually for Julia herself, to be perfectly honest. Because if I would be the bride and the, my groom would run away with X, I would be thank you for doing me a favor yeah, because yeah. yes because apparently i i dodged the bullet so uh yeah but i think we have wrapped up all the options and julia i hope that you will re-listen to the episodes visit our fun page on facebook to read a wonderful guide on how to crush the wedding <laughs> it's really hilarious and guys uh, yeah goodbye for now bye bye <laughs> You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's, That's all, folks! Lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.